This is episode 32 of the After Gambling Podcast. In this episode, we'll talk about questioning your own thoughts. Hey there, and welcome to the After Gambling Podcast. My name is Jamie. I am a compulsive gambler, and I'm also the host of this show. The last time I gambled was July 15th of 2010. So for those of you that are listening live and kind of as we go along, I just want to say thanks for uh, being patient. I know in the last one I said I'd be going out on vacation and it might be a week or so before I got another episode up and I apologize it's been a couple weeks, uh, but had a really nice vacation and just came back to a lot of work and just had some things going on with personal life, kids getting ready for school. So I wasn't able to get out episodes the last couple of weeks and for that I apologize, but sometimes I think we just need a little bit of a break and... So this was kind of my little summer break, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting back into it. Have a lot, a lot of things to talk about, uh, a lot of good interviews coming up. And so looking forward to a nice fall run here, uh, kind of a fall episodes. Um, and for those of you that are just listening to along in the future, you didn't miss anything. It was just a couple weeks went by, but you didn't even notice because this is just episode 32. So we're glad to have everyone here in this episode. And so one of the episodes, uh, actually all these upcoming episodes are going to really kind of, probably a lot of them are going to be influenced by a book that I just finished for the second time. And that book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. And I'll leave that out so I don't have to put an expletive on this, but you can probably fill in the blank. The book is by Mark Manson, and I will put a link to the book in the show notes. And if you want to buy the book, um, that'd be great. I'll put a link to the Amazon And that's also a way that I'm going to start doing a little bit of things that can support the show. And one of those is going to be to either have books or other things that I use in my life, maybe on Amazon or some other tools that and resources that if you want to use them, if you want to start your own blog, for example, um, you buy the hosting, uh, click the link on the website. Some of those things are just going to support the site. It's affiliate marketing. For those of you that don't know, it doesn't cost you anything else. Like I say, it's just a nice little way for me to get a couple bucks uh, if you go and buy the book or if you go and start a web account or there'll be some other things that we'll work on, but just want to throw that out there. So that link is there. If you want to get that book, please use the affiliate link. Like I say, it's not much, but it's just a little something to kind of uh, pay the bills for the show. So yeah, this book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F, uh, we'll go that way for now, is by Mark Manson. And it's one that I've read before. I I probably, or listen to the audiobook. I'm big on audiobooks. And that's the other one I'll put a link to. If you want to do Audible, um, I'm a big fan of Audible. But also first, check at your local library. A lot of libraries have digital downloads where you can listen to audiobooks uh, or borrow eBooks for free. So I do that quite a bit. Uh, don't buy anything you don't need to. So check out your library first, Uh, but definitely check out the book. It's a book, like I say, that I'd read before. I saw somebody in my Twitter feed where I was mentioning that they were going to be reading it. And at the time I commented something like, yeah, a good book, but it could have been much shorter. Um, But actually, I'm glad I went back and re-listened to it because it was actually really, really good. And I was wrong in kind of my remembering that the book kind of uh, got to the point early, but then just kind of continue to say the same thing over and over for the rest of the book. I must've been thinking about a different book because this one definitely wasn't it. And it definitely had a lot of things that kind of triggered thoughts in my head that would be good episodes for podcasts and also just kind of reminders for my everyday life. And so one of those ones that we want to talk about today is questioning our own thoughts. And actually a few weeks ago, my wife came home from work and I forget whether she heard this at work or if it was something she heard. And she said, you know what? I heard something that was really good. And it's don't believe everything you think. And that I thought, you know what? I I like that. And I've probably heard a version of that. There are probably a bunch of different versions you've heard before. But I think the core of this questioning your thoughts or not believing everything you think is because so many times we can get caught up in our own thoughts, right? We can be we can have one little thought that then triggers another and another and another. And all of a sudden we've figured out and spun this web in our head that we are stuck in a job. We're stuck in a relationship. We're stuck in um, our lives. We're just 
period stuck. We're going to be broke forever. We're never going to get out of it. We're going to have to deal with this gambling problem forever. Within seconds, we spin this huge web of thoughts. Um, and oftentimes they're just not true. And so one of the things that came out of the book was just always questioning your thoughts. Don't believe everything you think. And I think this is so applicable to so many things uh, while we're trying to quit gambling um, because we think, hey, the only way I can get out of this is to keep gambling. Or at this point, I've already dug a big enough hole. What's another 20 bucks? What's another 50 bucks? Uh, Or the most dangerous of all, um, well, I'll just do this one last bet and then I'll quit tomorrow. And... I'll kind of just hesitate here because I'm sure you've done that hundreds of times. I know I did that hundreds of times and I do it with so many things, the procrastination. You know what? I'm going to eat this one last cheeseburger and then tomorrow I'm never going to eat a cheeseburger again, which in that situation, I mean, that's just a poor thought process. It's not true. Um, It's not something we should be focusing on or thinking about. Uh, But with gambling, obviously gambling is something that you can be done for ever but why, why gamble that one last time? Because that's just leaving that door open. And so this questioning your thoughts, I mean, if we'll stick with that line of thought. If I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go play poker one more time today and then I'm never going to play again. Well, I think the whole questioning your thought process and a good way to think about it is just say, what if I'm wrong? And so in that case, what if I'm wrong? What if this isn't going to be the last time? What if going today encourages me to go tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Because I think so many times we focus on the the outcome we want to happen and that we want to believe in our head, that we believe that, yes, this is the last cheeseburger. This is the last bet. This is the last whatever. But I, and, and our thought is we have to do this one more time before we can say goodbye to it. I think, and I think that's, probably the best way to think about it or how we think and feel about it because it is, it's like losing a friend. It's like losing a part of you. Um, But I think when we stop and think about it and question our thoughts, we'd say, you know what? I've said that a hundred times. And if I've said it a hundred times, what, why won't this be number 101? And so by not believing everything we think and not just kind of accepting our thoughts as fa- at face value, but, but really playing it out and saying, okay, what if I'm wrong? What if I go tonight and, hey, worst case scenario, I win, which encourages me to then continue on for months and months. What if I'm wrong? I think this is such a powerful thought process because it, it kind of calls us out and I'm going to go for it and just, it calls us out on our bullshit, And so I guess at this point, I can go ahead and say that the book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. So if you're listening to this, um, yes, this one is going to have an expletive on it. But it calls us out on our bullshit because so many times that's what it is. It's just we're trying to come up with another reason. We're we're great rationalizers. We're going to come up with reasons that we try and convince ourselves of. um, And somehow we manage to do it. But we all know. We're not going to do it just one more time. One more time is just leaving the door open um, because we're not ready to shut the door on that chapter of our life. or We're afraid of it for some reason. But I think it's important, like I say, to play it all out and say, well, what if I'm wrong? And uh, I think this goes for all areas of our life. I mean, there's somebody I chat with quite often online and they're always very concerned about have they they've kind of lost their 20s they're in their 20s right now and they think that they can't change careers they think that they're kind of stuck i mean stuck is the word for this person and all their thoughts are they're caught up on this being stuck that it's too late for things and i always try and encourage them first of all they're like 10 years younger than me i'm like no you have plenty of time you're so young you have no idea like just how young you are but i understand in that moment you feel that way but what i'm trying to get them to realizes it's not all true. And what if you're wrong? What if you could go change jobs and in a year be in a job you really love and that you're being successful in and that leads you to meeting someone you really care about? What if you're wrong? And so, like I say, I think there's a lot of power in this 
for the recovery end of things uh, when we're trying to learn to quit. And then also uh, in recovery because we come across tough times. And anytime we come across a tough time, we say, well, man, this feels, this feels like too much. Or our brains start to turn and we start to come up with those thoughts that aren't healthy thoughts um, and that do lead us into a place where maybe we feel stuck. But hopefully now this is something I'm implementing personally and hopefully you can as well to say, what if I'm wrong? What if the thoughts I'm thinking are just thoughts and they're just as bad as my thoughts when I used to think that this was the only way to get out of gambling? So hopefully this helps you. And with that, I want to segue, kind of stay on the same topic, but also talk about the bigger picture things, which is that I've been talking to a lot of legislators, uh, calling up people as we're going to expand sports betting. And first of all, it's, it's mind blowing how little people understand about the, uh, the illness, the disorder. Um, but yes, we're, we're going to see expansion. Uh, and one of the things that always comes up with that is, oh, people that are, it's just going to be the people that are already gambling, continue to gamble. And if you've listened to the podcast, you know that I think that's bullshit and that I think that it's going to increase quite a bit. We're going to see more people gambling with expansion. Availability is always going to lead to more people doing anything. Um, so with that, I guess we're going to use the same thought process. And what I'm starting to talk to some of them and say, well, what if you're wrong? What if I'm wrong? And this is something I think if we kind of lay out the pros and cons side by side, and I'm obviously need to do this myself. What if I'm wrong? What if expansion of gambling will provide a product that a lot of people want? It won't increase the problem gambling numbers at all. Um, what, What if I'm wrong? And I would say, well, that's not the worst thing because if I'm wrong, then that's good. We don't have any more gamblers, which I don't want anybody to have to live the things that I've lived and the people that I've gotten to know have lived. So I think that'd be a huge positive. And also I haven't called to just stop this completely. I've never been one to say, oh, you can't expand it. My thought has always been that you need to expand it by increasing awareness programs, prevention programs, treatment programs alongside any expansion. It's not that you can't expand it. I just want you to do it responsibly. I'm using my air quotes here. You can't see them, but the responsible gambling uh, that we are always told to do as the uh, kind of consumer, we also need to do as the legislators and the operators. We need to be responsible about how we do things. And so treatment and all that type of stuff, like I say, if I'm wrong, those are the things I'm calling for and everybody should want. If I'm wrong, we have no increase in numbers and we devote a little bit more funding to help the people that are impacted. Is that a worst case scenario? To me, that seems like that's a pretty good win. Like that's like a win-win. I mean, if I'm, if I'm right, or if I'm, excuse me, if I'm wrong, then we don't see increases, then they're right about that, but we get a little more funding. And I think we can all afford a little bit more funding, right? I mean, one in 2% of budgets is absolutely atrociously low when we look at how much revenue is generated i mean that's that's not even skimming the possibility of what we could be doing or should be doing from a a treatment prevention and awareness side of things so that's if i'm wrong now i'll flip that and say to the legislators what if you're wrong and obviously the whole pros and cons looks a little bit different if you're wrong and and i'm right and the numbers go up well now we really need to have funds and probably not just the funds that we were thinking about having for treatment, awareness, and prevention. We probably need a lot more funds because if we're going to do this, it's going to increase the number of people gambling. It's going to increase the number of problem gamblers. And I would hope that we would also say that it's our responsibility to put more money and more funding behind the research and the education and the treatment. So, Like I say, if I'm wrong, not the end of the world, a lot of good things happen. Um, But if if we're wrong on the other side, uh, but we don't put any funding behind it, we don't kind of like say, hey, along the way, we're going to put in some money in case we are wrong, in case this becomes a problem, then I think we have some big issues. 
So that's why I say like this whole questioning your thoughts um, and, and the thought process of, but what if I'm wrong has so many different applications outside of recovery, so many applications just in life. I think it's one of those things. I mean, anytime we're making decisions in our lives and we say, okay, what if I'm wrong about the decision I'm making? And then we weigh those pros and cons. The If I'm right, pros and cons. What if I'm wrong, pros and cons. And pick the one that has the less harm, which is either going to be less harmful for ourselves, for our family, for those around us, for the world in, as a whole. Um, just asking, what if we're wrong? There's so much power in that. I hope this episode is helpful for you. Hopefully it kind of triggers some things. And what I want you to do now is just kind of think about those those thoughts that you've been having. The things that you say, okay, I'm stuck here. I can't get out of this job. I, I'll never get out of debt. I'll never this. And ask yourself, what if you're wrong? And also maybe paint the picture of what it would look like if you were wrong. And maybe the path uh, that would need to take to prove that you were wrong. Because those things may help you start to, start to identify uh, the factualness of those thought processes. And maybe kind of reprogram some of those thoughts to be more factual and also just kind of to make sure, like you say, that that when your thoughts start to creep in and they're maybe not the most positive, you can say, hey, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe this isn't the case because I think that's going to free us up from some of that stress, some of that depression, some of that anxiety in our lives. So again, hopefully this is helpful. As always, uh, please reach out to me. I've had a few people reach out that are now, I mean, racking up days, like 166 days was one of the messages I got today, which was awesome to see. Uh, And people are really racking up a lot of clean time. And whether you're on day one or day 166 or day 1066, congratulations. I'm glad that you're here. Reach out to me, reach out to others, just connect, uh, you know, I believe that the opposite of addiction is connection. So the more that you can connect, uh, whether it's in the Reddit group or in a Facebook group or with friends in real life, please just uh, don't take those opportunities for granted. Those are kind of the, the secret sauce of recovery. So with that, I will wrap this episode up. And remember, what we talk about here, it's for informational purposes. I think it can help you, but I am not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm not any of those types of things, a therapist, anything like that. So please seek out professional help. This is a serious disorder and you deserve to have a professional work with you. Um, There's no shame in this. No doctor, no therapist, no lawyer is going to look down upon you and say, oh, you're a terrible person because you fell victim to addiction. We all know folks with addiction. So please reach out to those people that can help you out the most and know your situation. And then finally, music for the show is Something Elated by Broke for Free and is licensed under the Creative Commons license. I will see you in the next episode, which is going to be an interview with one of the reporters in the uh, gambling industry. I think it's a really interesting interview. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it kind of has some a different kind of look on the expansion of gambling. So as always, look forward to seeing you in the next episode.